Ah, good morning, David. So um, I, I, I need to ask if I have your permission to record you. Uh, yes, certainly. Okay, all right. So you have given me permission to record you and to ask you questions about um, um, these, uh, these particular instruments of, um, uh, that are known as savings um, and savings plans. And, um, and one, one savings plan is the, is the uh, um, retirement savings plan. And then another uh, savings plan is uh, something called uh, um, a savings plan specific for uh, education. Uh, and then there are still other uh, such as health savings plans. So um, let's start with the, um, uh, the, 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 um, the savings account for education. Let's start there and, um, and compare it to um, the average uh, uh, you know, a co- a cost for college nowadays. Um, uh, David, can you can you share about like what what you what it cost you when you went to uh, Rensselaer Polytech um, back then and um, uh, the year and, and and nowadays what it costs for uh, for a uh, a year's tuition? Dr. Chu, I I'm afraid um, my dad paid for most of my college education and I do not recall how much that was. Excellent. Um, I did have to have student loans, mm. and I do remember, I think that when I ended up graduating, I had $12,000 of student loans, mm. and my dad picked up the rest of the bill, um, which, uh, if I ever saw it, I do not recall what it was. <laughs> mm. That's very interesting. Um, okay. So so that is probably I graduated, classic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I I graduated in 1982 mm. with my undergraduate degree. Mm. So that was uh that was a long time ago and I think tuition was probably, you know, somewhere I don't know $5,000 a year or something like that. I would guess. Well, there's actually a, a formula uh, out there, but you're absolutely right. Um private four-year tuition um uh per year was about uh, you know the top end would be around five thousand uh, average would be four thousand uh, and change um, in in 1982 and the public university was about a thousand dollars a year right right and yeah. I would guess Rensselaer where uh, mm-hmm. we both went uh, was on the high end of that range so yes. so my uh, my memory is probably uh, pretty accurate right yes yes so so even though you were very um, uh, you answered the way you answered the question was really good because um, you did not know what your parents paid, right? And um, and that is probably the answer that most students today uh, also they don't know what their parents will be paying, and sometimes the parents don't even know what they're about to be paying, All right? So so right. Um, so now if we look at the um, um, college tuition for um for uh, uh today right instead of a thousand dollars for public institutions what would you say the uh, the cost for uh public institutions today would be well that that varies mm-hmm. uh a great deal i'd mm-hmm. say at the low end you're talking about probably uh maybe a tuition of eight thousand to nine thousand mm-hmm. dollars and at the high end um for in-state, it, it's probably 20 to 25, um, because there are some in-state that are very expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, government uh, used to aid the public colleges much more than they do today, mm. which means that tuition has had to rise. Mm. So, so let's let. So now that we give some background, um, that's correct. Is that some public institutions cost more than others within the state? And then there's still the uh, some some individuals choose to attend a um, a state university. Maybe they don't choose to. They don't they don't have an option, but they 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 don't want to be in state. So they attend as an out of stater, and they attend a state university. So uh, a common example would be people out of New Jersey sometimes attend uh, Delaware University, or That's they right. attend a, a SUNY school. Right, you and I, we're both uh, New Jersey uh, residents, and um, and I wasn't born in New Jersey. I was born in New York, so I was actually just going back home. 
uh, to go when I went to Rensselaer, right? That that supposedly I'm going back home. Um, but um, but I was an out of state, but I attended a private u- university, so it really didn't matter. Right? You know, everybody pays the same amount um, as as a private institution. But but the the numbers when we talked about 1982 and a thousand, uh, based on what you gave me, it's uh, ten times more. It could be nine times more. It could be could be uh, twenty times more. Um, and then. Um, and then the, the private institutions have gone from 5,000. It actually hasn't increased as much as, um, as the 20 times more example, right? Could you imagine if a, uh, it would be $100,000 a year? But that's true. Actually, some private institutions do cost uh, six figures um, per, per year, right? I think NYU, the, the, right? Yeah, the cost of attendance of NYU is uh-huh. – uh, now this is the total cost of attendance, so it mm-hmm. includes room and board mm-hmm. uh, and books. But it's gone um, over ninety thousand dollars, and I would expect uh, if you were going to enter now and go there four years, by the time you graduated, you would definitely be paying over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Now, have you? I mean, you you misidentified uh, because it's all about the the data, all right? It's not just uh, let's just talk about it because then anybody could talk about five twenty nine plans. But I I introduced this through uh, the Dr. Holson's Academy. Um, and I bring in, in individuals because I, I want to ask the question from my side. So, so when I had a um, an interview regarding uh, the wushu techniques and, and and which ones are really good, and and it, it, the 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 art form that Bruce Lee worked on, which is Wing Chun, um, came up. And when I looked at the data sets, I saw that one of the first things you do in Wing Chun is you want to gouge the eyes of the person who your attacker gouged their eyes, right? So from a medical standpoint, I'm looking at gouging the eyes means it's a irreparable damage. Second thing you want to do is you want to you want to rip their throat out. You know, you grab their throat. Now that's this is very interesting because of all the techniques, imagine being mentally cha- uh, trained to do those as your first things. <laughs> and the attacker has no idea that oh, you just pick a fight, but the the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to gouge your eyes out. And I'm going to go for your throat. That's incredible, right? And I probably don't want to use the 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 the, um, the description of I because I, I don't do that. <laughs> but but you see, so Dr. right, Doctor Chu, yeah. I yeah. I hope this is not a a, a metaphor for public uh, for uh, higher education. <laughs> well, actually, it's a lead-in into that. I I didn't I don't go digress, uh, you know, for uh, digression purposes. I I I, sh- I, I highlight it. You triggered it. Um, the the word of um, total cost. Right so, uh, versus tuition because tuition is just go go over there bare bones, um, gets you supposedly the the degree right but the experience is going to be vastly different than if you went and got all the bells and the whistles. Yes, and um, it's very misleading. Mm. Um, it's really unbundling because mm. there are many cases where the tuition doesn't include other mandatory fees. So uh, even if, for instance, you're living at home and commuting, so maybe you don't have the room and board, you'll still have books and fees. So uh, actually, the government uh, has uh, clamped down on this unbundling a bit, and they're forcing the colleges to report something called cost of attendance, Mm -hmm. which includes everything. Right, right. And that doesn't really include everything, because if you, you remember when you were at RPI and I was at RPI, everything does not include, um, the university everything does not include living off campus. Um, <laughs> right. Actually, right. it does it now. Does, it does um, now? Really? They, they, they include that into the numbers? Back then, yeah. It, no, so, okay. so right. the the it does include room and board, mm. and that room and board could be on campus or it could be off campus. Um, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter so much. Really, it's not going to be more expensive. So, for example, um, at Cornell, if you moved off campus, there's some off campus properties that are really nice. Even at RPI, right well, on on you know on the on the uh, Husik, there are some nicer apartments that could run you a thousand a month. Well, of course. I mean, uh, you know, if uh, maybe your family is wealthy, uh, you could uh, buy a, uh, um, you know, a home near campus and rent it out to students as well as live in it yourself. Mm. So it's it's um, certainly um, certainly 
it does, the cost of attendance doesn't include something like that. But it does include uh, either living on campus or an equivalent rent. Um, typically, colleges charge approximately the going rent for the area mm-hmm. uh, when they when they um, when they're charging for their room and board. You know, this is interesting because when I went into medicine later on, um, I, I, you know, that you don't go into medicine unless you first go to medical school. And I met some uh, peers that lived like they were a surgeon while they were going to medical school. Yeah, all right, right. So <laughs> lived like they were a successful surgeon. So it was, it was, it was really nice. And I, I had the, these classmates. It was incredible. Their parents brought them food every day. They lived like, I said, this is incredible. This is why you want to go study medicine, because your parents could suddenly turn into those, you know, it treats you like a king and queen, right? Every day, daily. This was, this was um, wow, the, the, the amount of studying you could then do and focus. I, could, I actually lost focus watching them. Right? So I'm just, show, I'm just highlighting that there are differences. Even though we try to standardize, there are differences um, sure. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I so, have to tell you though, I had some friends at, at Rensselaer yeah. um, mm. who were basically running out of money each semester and um, didn't mm. know where their next meal was going to come from. Yes. And uh, there's not that side too. Scholarship students and yeah. and uh, you know we we all tried to help them out, but mm. uh, people people had a lot of trouble. So um, yeah, it runs the gamut, I guess. Oh, the fun part about it is to talk about range, right? The, the top end of the range always gets people excited, and the bottom end of the range gets people's attention. So I was at the bottom end of the range when it came to summers. So, so if I wanted to stay on campus during summertime at Rensselaer uh, and make money, because I had to make money to cover my fall and, and, and spring, and I did research. So you did research. They give you a budget, but the budget is really not enough to, um, to, um, to, uh, to also have a girlfriend, also have um, these other things. So, so, you know, the problem in college is, you know, it's almost time to, um, to be married and things like that. So you, you want the full experience. You don't want the high school experience where you don't, you don't have a girlfriend or if you're a girl, you might not have, you might not have a partner. So, you know, it doesn't include those things. And, um, and so what I did was I, were, I lived inside a fraternity over the summer, even though I was not a frat member, and they, were, they charged me $50 for, um, for an, a month's uh, rent, and um, as long as I cooked the meals for them. So, so I, it was like, oh, wow, wow. That w-, and I got the food to eat, and then, um, and then so, um, so I got free meals and board, and my board only cost me fifty dollars. That doesn't work during the, um, the 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 fall and spring because people come back. But there are there's the flip side is I, I showed the expensive, but then also there are ways. Um, and one should also check the university. Is there how many streams of possible income can you have? You know, uh, on the off season as well as the high season. And and Rensselaer was unique because you could also get a summer job at, at Lake George. That's right. In yeah. the uh, the research station they have there. Yes, yes, and and then so so Rensselaer is unique in that sense. There's all kinds of uh, streams of income, um, but then let's talk about uh, something about these plans. Now that we know the range and the cost of tuition, and then it doesn't include everything, but um, but these this five twenty nine plan, um, it's a. It, uh, 529 stands for this tax code, right? And then um, that's right. Yeah, and then that you could save it and apply it for things. Um, you, you know, the average 529 account size, and I'm I'm using um, 2022 data, is um, is that on average Americans, uh, since you know we got to pick somebody to to talk about, um, have saved about twenty eight thousand twenty nine thousand dollars in the 529 uh, account. Which, um, based on some of the numbers we're talking about, it doesn't cover all four years of university. Oh, definitely not. Mm. But um, you know, we 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 talked about cost of attendance. We talked about tuition. 
Mm. Um, there is a net price with colleges, though, mm. and um, the net price is often lower because many students get some form of aid. Mm. So the students may be getting some aid. Mm. Um, the 529 plan may go further than you think. So maybe that doesn't cover all four years, but maybe it covers, you know, two out of the four years when you include aid. Mm -hmm. So it does depend on the student. Um, and it depends on how much the student is paying for that particular college. Right. So getting a, I mean, you, you mentioned aid based. So, is it better for the parent to not um, uh, not not pay for everything and use the student to get the aid? Well, um, I'm I'm not sure if I totally understand that question. All right. The, well, let me describe um, it as um, dis disowning sure. the child, saying, "All right, you know, they're they're 18 now, and so they're out in the street." Um, and so maybe, maybe um, you know, if you have, and, and that, that, they're not really doing that, but they're just saying that they are, so that financially uh, they can qualify because they have nothing, right? We are all born into nothing, um, but it's not really nothing because, because it's just, yeah, but if you look at individual systems as a system, see, you're an expert at doing that. You studied engineering. So we're just going to look at the, the, the child as the system, not having the parents, they have no income, they should qualify for financial aid. Um, yeah, but the, the well, so there is, a, there is different aid available for an independent student, which uh -huh. is a student that's considered to be independent from their parents uh -huh. versus dependent. Uh -huh. um, but there's different, sometimes there's a waiting period, depends on the state. Uh -huh. Uh, to be declared an independent student, so mm. um, it, it may not happen right away at 18. And then that student really needs to be independent. Mm. Um, you know, if a student is living with their parents, they're not independent. Right. Sorry. Yeah, exactly, right? So you have um, to... And if yeah. a student is not living with their parents, how are they paying for their rent? Right, right. So, so a truly independent student has to be truly independent. Right, yeah. right. I'll tell you, though, uh, one, one measure of independency, interestingly enough, is marriage. If a student gets married, they are considered independent. Wow. Isn't that interesting? If I don't ask the statistic, I don't get the answer from David Haas. You know, <laughs> right? So, so you right. just, what I like about our conversation, right, is that, is that you, you also, you highlighted so as long as they got married, they become, you know, there's no questions whether or not they will, um, they will, they will be well, qualified, right? They, they do have to um, file a, a uh, you know, a tax return as independent. But uh, if you're married, chances are you're doing that, and there's probably some kind of income. Okay. So, uh, so marriage, marriage is usually a sign of independence. Oh, this is great. Do you know that um, that if you got married during high school, right, then that would definitely qualify you. Like senior year, you uh, you quali you get yourself married, so that you become independent, right? And then you file. Of course, you file, like you said. Um, th th did you know another statistic? But, but that that's not something that I would advise. Um, I, I think it's very important <laughs> right. not to make um, not to make mistakes. Just to take advantage of perceived leap, loopholes in rules and taxes. Right. Uh, we weren't talking about loopholes. I was just talking about <laughs> statistics, right? So just for the listeners out right. there, this is, um, this is not a loophole. Um, uh, not, it's not even a show. This is a call, uh, but it is, a, it is not about loopholes. It is just about, you know, it's actually entertainment, right? So, <laughs> so, so do you know that statistically most high school relationships don't last in college? I, I, I do not know that, but I believe you. Yeah. And um, I've seen that in uh, members of my own family. So I believe you. On the other hand, it's interesting. I know several couples who, um, you know, they had high school sweethearts or they knew people in high school. Then they went off, got married to somebody else, later on um, got a divorce or, or lost their spouse and went back to the high school sweetheart. Oh yeah, now looping back is different. So so steady romantic relationships as a 16-year-old 
uh, to routes, uh, uh, you know, is roughly about six months. Um, so it doesn't even get you through high school. And if you're 17 to 18, right, according to the research, it lasts about a year. All right. However, dating early does ap allow you to learn about conflict. <laughs> you know, you suddenly run into conflict. You run into communication issues, right, that you will uh, subsequently prepare you for marriage. Now, 37% right. of um, once it goes into uh, long distance, right, and any relationship coming from the high school ends in the first semester of college, 37%. Right, and then and then the statistics goes on, gone and on. But this is not about high school dating, really. I just wanted to highlight that if you wanted to be married, right, and then and then you're married to your high school. Just remember, there's these these stats out there that could throw things off because divorce. Now, if they were to divorce, um, that was a terrible thing, right? But does that mean that they're still independent because they were married once? I don't know the details of those rules. Yeah, see how the crazy um, I suppose get. <laughs> yeah. you could be independent. Um, it really has to do with your current status. So mm. I suppose you could have been independent and then gotten a divorce and then, um, you know, live with your parents again. You're, you're uh, under age uh, 24. You're, you're going to college. You'd be considered a dependent. Mm. So it could go back and forth. Okay, so so let's now uh, see all the possible things we could go into. We're not going to go into those things. I just want to ask you, based on the average uh, five two nine plan of about twenty nine thousand dollars, based on twenty twenty two data, what is that? Um, what do you have to do to to achieve that? Well, um, there's there's the best case, <laughs> which would be an early saver. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is certainly something that I always recommend. Once mm. the child is born, mm. open a 529 plan for the child and um, periodically, um, maybe on a monthly basis, you know, put $50 a month, $100 a month into that 529 plan. Mm -hmm. Invite grandparents or aunts and uncles to um, gift into the 529 plan. Um, early savings is the most beneficial way to create a, uh, a significant 529 balance. Mm. But it's never too late. Um, if you have that capability later to put money into the 529 plan, it, it can be a great advantage. Um, in some states, you get some tax benefits for it mm. uh, within the state. So maybe a deduction from uh, state income tax. Mm. Um, and, uh, like, like any savings, it's a matter of doing it early and doing it methodically. That's right. That, see, the, the, the key about earliness and methodical and what David mentioned about, uh, you know, monthly of, uh, of a hundred dollars, you know, what you do is you have these family gatherings and then you, what you do is don't bring any gifts and you have everyone chip in. So let's say there's five people coming to the gathering. Is everyone's paying twenty dollars for for our for our for our daughter or son here uh, when they're age of one? And every month you do one of these, right? So you you give them this thing, and they put it in twenty dollars. That's your fee for coming in to uh, to having the meal. Meals on us, but you know here's and you might get a little luckier and get uh, get someone to put in. You know twenty dollars is too little. Uh, let me put in thirty or forty. And it doesn't have to be the same people, right, David? It could be like every month you have a different, you might, you might stagger so that the grandparents come every other month, the relatives come in the every other month. So now you only need six times with your grandparents and six times with your relatives. And a hundred bucks a month, and you do this repeatedly for 17, um, you know, 17 years, right? $100 a month times 12 gives you 1200 17 years with no compounding gets you 20000 And if it compounds, now you could, um, you could, you could then get, um, uh, exceed the numbers, right? Sure. Yeah. And, you know, it can be even simpler than that. Maybe mm. you file your taxes every year and you get a refund. Mm. And maybe, you know, you get a $1,000 refund. Well, you know, put that $1,000 into the 529 plans for your kids. Mm. Um, and just do it every year. Mm. Yeah. So 
it, it doesn't, you know, it, um, certainly inviting inviting your relatives and and grandparents who who might you know love your love your child more to, than you uh, to also uh, <laughs> right. uh, provide some money might be might be great, but not everybody might be in a position to do that. Yeah. But you know you can you can do it yourself. Right, but they might love your child more than you. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, at the time when you invite them, right? It's just like to them. Oh, it's only once in the uh, once in the blue moon, right? And um, That's right. yeah, and it, it, everyone's. It's like when you give um, tips uh, at, at a restaurant, right? You know, you could give you could give all kinds of things, and if they if you they, they make you feel good, and that's the whole whole purpose of that. If you make someone feel good, they could give you a bigger tip. So you make them feel really good. You do some really nice things. It's good for the relationship as well, and then and then you hit your goal, right? You hit your goal. So so um, so if we grew at one point oh five every year, um, then um, then you could you could get to. Um, uh, let's see. In in I don't, I don't know if the thing would if you did it for ten years, the twenty thousand could then grow to th- uh, it would exceed the, the even the, the national average easily within ten years, compounding at five yes. percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. And right. and actually, by starting early, you don't really need to um, save as much. If you start late, um, you have to save much more because of that power of compounding. Yeah, so the power of consistency compounded, but then now it's a relationship builder. You don't call this like give to it. You call these relationship builders monthly, and everybody comes in every month. You can even do it twice a month if you like, and then you you could double the rate uh, and grow twice as fast. But it it you you call these relationship builders. It's like birthday parties, but they're relationship building parties, um, and it's about making um, making the next generation great. Not again, because they weren't, they weren't, nobody did this. So we actually today formulated a method for people to regularly do this. And, uh, and you just tell them, you, you know, you give this much of a tips anyway. So, so you, know, you, just, you just put it in the jar um, and, uh, and you do it regularly. And no one even feels it because it's, uh, it's, just, um, it's just for the next generation. So remember right. you heard it from here. If you're get, doing these monthly gatherings and, and call David Haas, you know, it's like he... He is very good. So we only covered the 529, um, and and then let's talk a little bit about the negatives of the 529. Is that what what can't you use it for? Can you use it for uh, uh, off campus rent? Can you use it for meals uh, that are off campus? So they're not college meals, but can I use it for um, dinners with a girlfriend or or a boyfriend uh, when I'm in college? What can I use this 529 for? Well, interestingly enough, um, you can use it for off-campus rent. So Mm -hmm. the colleges uh, publish this cost of attendance, as Mm -hmm. we uh, were saying before, Mm -hmm. and that includes a portion for room and board. Mm -hmm. So if if your student is living Mm off-campus, you can can take out from your 529 plan the amount for the room and board Mm-hmm. Uh, that matches the amount in the cost of attendance. So, in other words, if you get one of those really expensive places, you can only go up to the room and board in the cost of attendance um, or up to the actual amount that you spent, whichever, whichever is lower um, mm-hmm. or whichever is higher. Uh, but at any rate, so the answer is yes. You can uh, use it for um, for room and board uh, for off campus now, will it cover uh, uh, dinner with your girlfriend? I don't know. It's stretching it a little bit, but mm-hmm. it, it it should cover board. Mm. So um, it it will cover a certain amount that you spend on meals. Okay, but it doesn't cover, or does it cover spring break vacation? No, no, it does not <laughs> cover spring break vacation. <laughs> that is boring. It does you do cover, board. however, things like <laughs> summer abroad. Ah. Yes. So um, if, if you are in a, uh, a degree program and you go at least half time, mm-hmm. uh, then uh, it will cover summers um, and, you know, summer abroad or semester abroad. If you're paying tuition for that um, and room and board, it's going to cover the expenses of that uh, trip as far as room and board is concerned. 
I think it does not cover transportation under any circumstances, but it will cover room and board, whether that room and board is uh, within the U.S. or in, uh, you know, Barcelona. So it's, a, it's an excellent, highly flexible, um, all kinds of uh, avenues down there. Uh, you should you should definitely do one of these things. Now, now then, what about the... Um, uh, what happens if they if they were to um, if they were to get a scholarship? Um, what happens? I've heard that all that money that you left in their tax free savings, you could actually get it out. That's right. So um, now this this all works on a year to year basis. So this is mm-hmm. actually an important point. Mm-hmm. You can't decide to take it out. You know. Uh, the year after graduation based on previous years of scholarship. But in the year that you get a scholarship, um, the amount of the scholarship could be taken out of the 529 plan tax-free, even if you don't need to spend it on college. Hmm. That's what I'm going to do with my kids. If they get a scholarship, I'll say, for every scholarship you do, all that money, I'll just I'll just give you um, either the equivalent or I'll double it. You get the money out; it goes in your bank account. I'll top it. And I'll I'll match it. So you know that'll that'll incentivize them, right? You know, yeah, right, right, yeah. yeah. And um, that works for the uh, you know. There's some tax credits. There's mm-hmm. an American Opportunity Tax Credit, mm-hmm. which is up to twenty five hundred dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Um, your income has to be below a certain point. But if you get that twenty five hundred dollars of tax credit and you have, um, you know, twenty five hundred dollars in your five twenty nine plan, you can take that twenty five hundred dollars out tax free out of the out of the five twenty nine plan. You see why I did this is I've heard so many things about five twenty nines and they typically are so boring, you know <laughs> that that I'm like I can't even get through the first uh, you know first half hour. Where it just and I didn't learn much because it's just so thick. But this, I threw in a lot of life experiences and make it now. Now let's that's a good setup for the retirement plan for people. Um, is um, is retirement well, plans? You, yes, Doctor Chu. If yeah. you don't mind, let me let me um, hmm. let me point out a couple of other things. Sure. About five twenty nine plans. Mm-hmm. So people are often negative about them because of the perceived restrictions, hmm. but. If you have leftover money in your 529 plan, mm-hmm. um, first of all, you can change the beneficiary. Mm-hmm. So um, if the one child doesn't need the money, maybe a different child does. It doesn't need to be a child within um, your immediate family. It could be a grandchild eventually. It could be a, uh, a nephew or a niece. So um, It could even so be yourself. If, it could even be yourself. Maybe you want to go back to school for a degree program, an advanced degree program. Right. Absolutely. So that's one one point. Um, a second point is that uh, you can use up to ten thousand dollars per beneficiary to pay for student loans, to pay mm. back student loans. Mm. So um, if you have some excess left in the five twenty nine plan. You can look to paying back student loans. And something new that came with the SECURE Act uh, this past year, or I guess it was last year, uh, SECURE 2.0 Act, actually, is that up to $35,000, and there are some rules on this, but up to $35,000 can be transferred into a Roth IRA, which is a good lead-in to talk about retirement plans. No, no, that's a great lead-in. See, this is the power of the engineer. The engineering mind is, you know, I want to do the five, the five twenty nine into the retirement plan. You set it up perfectly. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, so, so the the yeah, do one of these things. Do it for both your kids. You can always change the beneficiary, um, and um, and then look at it as a discount. You know, you don't have to do the maximum, but you you look at it as a discount to the college tuition. Um, or, or graduate school, whatever it is, it's, it's great. Um, so now we go into the average retirement. Um, oh, oh the, uh, so is the average amount of the 529, of 29,000 or so, is that a good uh, goal to have? Or do you think that based on you know, your experiences, are we, uh, should, we, should we do um, twice as much 
Uh, what should the goal be on the amount for the 529 per individual? Um, it depends on who you are. It depends mm -hmm. on what your goals are for your student. It depends on how much you expect to pay for college. So maybe you're a parent uh, or parents who are uh, pretty wealthy and have high expectations for your student. Mm. And maybe you're looking to send them to an Ivy League college, uh, which the uh, Ivy League, well, I should say Ivy League universities, the Ivy League universities do not provide merit aid, which means even if your student is uh, you know, top in their class, they are not going to get money. Uh, the Ivy Leagues only um, only provide money for needs-based aid. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're expecting that your child is going to go to Columbia or Yale, um, mm -hmm. then the, the uh, tuition or the, the costs are going to be up to you to pay. And in that case, I would say the 529 is a great vehicle to save, and you should be trying to uh, max it out every year. On the other hand, maybe you're, uh, you know, you're you're just hoping that your student is going to go to uh, to a public university or public college, uh, or maybe even just vocational school. So uh, a 529 plan is still a great tool for that, but uh, you know, saving less than the uh, than the median may be uh, may be okay or, or up to the median. So I, I think it really depends on who you are and what your expectations are. You know, the interesting thing is I don't know of anybody who wouldn't want the best for outcome for their children, right? So, you know, if we could only show that going to an Ivy League provides the best outcome, uh, lower divorce rate, you know, higher paying job, uh, increased chance of being the president of the United States, things like that, right? Then, then, um, then we, could, we would all say we would want the child to become... Uh, it go to an Ivy League, and how do we prepare for it now? You just gave the shocker, is that no merit aid, so therefore you should be saving every year, and you indicated the maxing, maxing it out. What is the maximum per year right now? Um, it's the gift tax um, exclusion amount, which this year is $17,000. Hmm. It is indexed for inflation, so um, it... it um, is something that could go up with inflation. So, I mean, you know, for many families, seventeen thousand dollars is is a tough nut uh, every year, and and for those families, you should be putting less in. But uh, if you can afford it, um, you know, go ahead. Now, of course, you know, maybe you have multiple children. That means multiple five twenty nine plans. Um, so you have to see how far your savings go. You're going to have to create some very inventive parties um, every month, right? And then <laughs> That's uh, right. And that that'll that'll do it, right? It doesn't have to be. A I relative. have a, I have a niece with five children, so you know, um, I I think they're saving what they can. Of course. Uh, her husband is a university professor, so that that's another good path because uh, those university professors usually get tuition remission. As long as the child chooses that that university, right? That's right. Although there there are um, universities are in uh, organizations mm. that um, will uh, give tuition remission to any university within the organization. I'm not super familiar with those, but I know it's not just your university. Yeah. So 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 just to wrap this up is that one is that there there could be consortiums. You may want to take a job at a university. To, uh, to, uh, to, to pad things. Uh, but another uh, thing is throw those parties. It doesn't have to be grandparents. It can also be relatives, and it can also be friends, the way you throw those parties. And, uh, the, and, and does attending an Ivy League school improve any th chances at all? Uh, it is actually published data that improves your chances of finding a job, uh, gaining acceptance into a master's program, uh, you know, so further uh, education, because uh, Ivy Leagues have positive uh, reputations uh, uh, today, right? I don't know in the future uh, for um, potential employers or admissions counselors. Apparently, yeah. There's no question that uh, if you go to an Ivy League uh, university, you are in demand when you graduate. Mm. Yeah.
So, but then, but then, but then all bets are off afterwards. So, so you, so just to, just to highlight, this is really important, um, uh, information. I hope it's been helpful for you guys. And, uh, and let's, let, let's now move on to the, the retirement side. All right. So retirement, um, the, um, it, it, it the data shows that about a hundred thousand dollars is the average account balance for um, for retirement accounts in the United States, a lifetime uh, retirement for uh, uh, about a hundred thousand. It's a little over mm-hmm. in some cases and a little bit under in other cases. But I'm I'm including from IRAs to four hundred one ks, and then and then four hundred three bs are 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 the least amount. Um, but IRAs are the most at one hundred one nine thousand dollars. Uh, as of 2022 data, according to Fidelity Investments. So, so, um, so what, what are these, and is $100,000 the average number enough? Well, um, so these are what I would call um, tax-advantaged, and I use the word advantaged, uh, which I'll explain, mm. tax-advantaged retirement plans. Mm. So... Uh, the plans, depending on um, which one it is, will either allow you to um, defer your taxes until you make withdrawals. The idea there is that when you're putting money in, that money is not taxed from your income, mm. and you're doing that while you're working, and then later on you're going to retire, and you take the money out, and the theory is that when you take the money out, you'll be at a lower tax rate. So that tax deferral helped you. It also helped you because um, you're deferring taxes on the amount that you might earn with investments within the um, within the plan. Hmm. And then there's another type of plan uh, which is tax-free. So you're putting money in that's already been taxed. The um, gains from your investments, once you take them out, theoretically when you retire, are going to then be tax-free. So the tax-free ones usually have the word Roth, um, which is named after a member of a senator, I think, who who, um, originated those plans. And then uh, the other ones I'll refer to as traditional. Mm. So they're ones you can get from your workplace, which are often called uh, 401ks, but they're, they're also 403bs and some other types of plans. Uh, these numbers and letters are all have to do with the tax code. Um, so, you know, many people are familiar with a 401k. And then uh, they're ones that you can do um, privately without the um, employer, and those are typically called IRAs. Hmm. But just to confuse things, some employers have IRA type plans <laughs> as well, and then if you're a small business person, you might have something called a solo 401k, which is um, something you set up for yourself uh, when you don't have other employees in your mm. business. Mm. Um, there was a second part of that question, Doctor Chu. I think you were asking me if a hundred thousand was enough. Yes, and my answer is no, under no circumstances. So Americans are not saving enough for retirement. Hmm. Um, if you want a reasonable retirement lifestyle, by the time you reach age 65, hmm. you should be thinking about having retirement savings of, I, I'm going to just ballpark it of around a million dollars. And One that's for million. a reasonable, hmm. a reasonable lifestyle. Reasonable? Does that include like uh, diabetic treatment? Um, does it allow for um, you know uh, uh, chronic diseases of uh, at least two types? Uh, no. No. <laughs> not not really. So um, what you know? If, like, if, if, <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, tr- <laughs> two types of chronic diseases are 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 are, are on average um, uh, on everyone's plates. That's right. So, uh, you know, one one issue is is having enough money to pay for um, a a more expensive type of health plan when uh, uh, um, 
the other the other issue is uh, what's going to happen to long term with you with long term care in case you need it. Um, so at a million dollars of savings, you're unlikely to be able to pay for long term care. You probably can pay for medical care quite well because Medicare is an excellent program that uh, that all um, well I shouldn't say all but most um, Americans over 65 would be in but um, and and now we're digressing a little bit but you want to choose your Medicare plan wisely to make sure that you have uh, full coverage for something like um, like like a chronic disease but when we talk about some of these diseases the drugs can be extremely expensive and drug coverage is not always the best under medicare so you really need that extra money to uh, to pay for uh, for drug coverage so see the see what happens on the details like the eye gouging and throat grabbing you know if you <laughs> you know once i start asking these details of t- chronic disease i mean everybody understands diabetes and then what's the other chronic diseases? Many of them, but one of them is a, a, a fibrosis of the liver. You know, so you got you got so many people who have NASH, non-alcohol. They're not a drinker, but their liver starts to go. And and what does that mean? Well, you'll have edema in your legs. You'll have ascites in your belly, meaning you know it'll just be it'll be water retention. Um, you you won't feel good in your body. And you're telling me that a million dollars doesn't you know doesn't address some of these things and possibly the medical plan the medicare that you choose it may not provide you with the types of uh, options that you need for those things and you don't even know if you'll get that one on your plate right there's uh, on average of two chronic diseases uh, rheumatoid arthritis is another one alzheimer's is another one these are all chronic they all progress they the, the terrible ways to to end uh, but they they uh, they cost society a lot um you know uh, parkinson's is a you know there's all kinds right so so then you look at the end at the end point right and you say um well when, when do you end and and you look at it as uh, around 100 years old 90 90 years old um those those are not the average but the the average is not far from that and definitely more than 10 years from retirement age, everybody lives past. So, so then, so then, so then you look at, and the numbers will get worse because anybody who was weak got eliminated during COVID. So now we might statistically get people living longer, or more of them living longer um, than, than, than that. And does it include um, hip and joint replacement? So let's say I want three hips. Um, during my after retirement, uh, with a million dollars, can I cover three hips, um, two shoulders, um, uh, uh, or two treatments of the shoulders? At least um, uh, thirty weeks of physical therapy every year. All right, thirty weeks is only you know so fifty-two weeks a year, so a little bit over half. Those weeks go by fast. Um, and I also want the higher quality physical therapist. You start asking those questions, and you start asking what what do I need, David? on my retirement plan? Well, it's, yeah, it's difficult to answer. So Medicare Mm -hmm. covers many of these things actually quite well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Things like physical therapy is covered quite well. The Mm -hmm. good news is that most physical therapists uh, and surgeons, for that matter, take Medicare, Mm -hmm. but not the very top ones, actually, interestingly enough. So, you know, if you you want your hip replacement, (laughs) It, at the local hospital, uh-huh. no problem. Medicare yeah. will take care of you, right? Uh, especially a traditional Medicare, right? And but if you want your, you know, your hip replacement with the best doctor at a place like, uh, and I'm going to pick them out, uh, you know, Hospital for Special Surgery, yeah, uh, HSS in New York, mm-hmm. that doctor may not take Medicare. Why that is surgeon. that? Why? Why is that? Because Medicare reimbursements are lower. Mm. And if that doctor is in high demand, mm-hmm. they might choose not to take Medicare simply because they can still make a lot of money without taking Medicare. Actually, they're making more, right? If you want, that, right? doctor, they're if you want more. that doctor, <laughs> you'll have to pay out of pocket. Okay. Um, so, so that's a great distinction, right? Because the doctor wants to make more um, because they can make more. Um, kind of like it's the same function of the um, of the universities. Some universities will charge, like you described, ninety thousand a year because they can. 
they only have so many spots and everybody wants there. So suddenly the demand supply, right, and it's, uh, drives right. the drives the result. And uh, and so the number you were giving a million dollars might not include all of those other um, parameters. Yeah, you know, with a million dollars of savings at age um, 65, 65. You know, first of all, I'm thinking about um, what I would consider um, normal long life. By normal long life, I mean, you know, you're living into your mid to late 90s. Now, that's way above average, Mm -hmm. but you don't know if you're going to be average. So that means you need to plan to not run out of money Mm -hmm. to live a long life. Mm -hmm. And the... um, you know, there, there are expenses that, that you'll need along the way, but you're probably going to, you know, live off a current equivalent spending rate of maybe, you know, 60000 to $70,000 a year. A million dollars of savings plus Social Security, um, you're probably just about there. But um, are you going to be able to afford that, uh, that you know, top-notch ultra-surgeon? Um, or the, uh, the physical therapy beyond the, what, you know, the low level of medical necessity, uh, which, which quite frankly might be something that would really help you. Maybe not. So, um, not to mention things like, uh, we didn't even talk about, uh, dental. So, yes, uh, which is the know, thing that, that kills uh, you if you don't get, if you actually don't get good dental, it's like cleaning right. your teeth is like really important, but who cleans your te- teeth is actually more important than cleaning your teeth sometimes. And who, what I mean, is not one particular person, but for example, periodontal uh, you know, dent- uh, cleaning of your teeth where they look deeper into the gums is different than general dental cleaning. Yeah, but even that, I'm going to call that a relatively low expense. Yeah. I'm talking about right. things like implants. Yeah. I mean, you know, as you get older, you're mm. going to lose your teeth. Mm. Sorry, but this happens to the majority of people, and um, the 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 high standard of care now is to get dental implants. Each implant is probably I don't know, uh, eight thousand to ten thousand dollars. So how many implants can I get with a million dollars saved? <laughs> Depends what else is going on. How many right. teeth are in your head? Right, right, um, exactly. You how don't need an implant for each one because you can have. Um, I think bridges and things like that, but still, you you know, you're talking about a bunch of implants in your mouth um, to have the nicest looking teeth um, as you age. So, uh, you know, um, frankly, that means your 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 savings rate needs to be higher uh, if that's what you want out of life as you retire. It's not like I have a choice, right? It's like uh, if I have ten dental implants, I mean. There, there are 30-some-odd teeth, right? So 32. So if you, if you suddenly need a bunch of uh, extras, now you're going to, uh, you're going to be short. Like, and, then, and then here's the other thing. You said you, you'll, it's like feeling, feeling like you're living off of 60000 a year if you saved a million by the time you're 65. Is that right? Right, right. This is, you know, um, and, and it's very possible to do that um, in a comfortable way if you've paid off the mortgage to your house. And so, you know, you're, you're, not, uh, you're not paying a mortgage any longer. Um, many states um, give uh, some uh, tax benefits to their seniors, so maybe they're not paying as much taxes as they would have normally, uh, including property tax benefits. So, yeah, it's not as bad as it sounds, but that that's kind of where you're at with with that million dollars level of of uh, savings. Let, let's let's target the uh, the last thing you mentioned about you know property tax. So say your property tax, and I'll just use a, and I'm going to go on the extreme side. All right, so say your property tax is let's say it's thirty thousand a year. Um, what does that become once you hit sixty five? Do they cut it in half? Well, it depends on your income level, and it depends on the state that you're in. Uh, New Jersey is not that generous. Mm -hmm. They are talking about uh, some rebates for seniors um, starting, I think, in three years. That was in the latest budget. Uh, I think the current program gives you like $1,200 off your taxes or something small like that. $1,200 off of $30,000. 
Okay. <laughs> That's right. All right. They also okay. have a, a freeze program. So uh-huh. uh, New Jersey does so that your property taxes are frozen. Mm. Now, uh, in other words, they, they're not going to continue to go up at least. Now, other states have, um, have other benefits that could be, that could be uh, higher than that. Or better than that. So uh, the reason I use thirty thousand, right, is that that is actually a number that is quite common in New Jersey, right? And um, uh, unfortunately, yes. Yeah, and then so just so thirty thousand per year, so you guys, so so that basically anybody listening to this, thirty thousand a year is a, is it, it, is equivalent to some university, private university uh, tuition costs today. So so many many seniors do decide to mm-hmm. downsize. Mm-hmm. Um, They'd for have that to. reason, so they'd have to based on well, sixty thousand a year salary. Um, uh, if you have a uh, if you have a house uh, or home with a thirty thousand dollar tax rate in New Jersey, it's probably quite a large home. Yeah. And as you age, you you have fewer people living in your home. Most likely, um, you don't want to take care of such a big space, and you might want to downsize anyway. And you would downsize to some place that would have both lower taxes. Um, within New Jersey, or um, a lot of people in New Jersey, uh, when they downsize, they move to other states that are lower, lower taxed. And be careful of that. Just like the eye gouging and the throat grabbing, is if you downsize, make sure you are not downsizing into a higher crime rate, because um, because if you go to the ATM or something and 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 you get robbed there, people can see you. But if you go to the ATM and get tracked there, and then they follow you home, uh, and then they, you know, right at the door, they, they, they knock it in and say, give me all your passwords, and the gun is pointed to your head. And you give them all your passwords, and then, uh, and then they actually make you do the transfer into the bank account. There you go. It's all gone. All right, so, so you're well, bit, you're a I bit think you, you, you really, um, <laughs> unfortunately, crime rates are variable. So you make your decision, yeah. and then the crime rate can change. Yeah. So um, certainly, uh, any place that you move to, you know, you need to be uh, cognizant of everything, uh, including what the uh, the healthcare quality is in the area that you're moving to. Mm-hmm. Um, are you, you know, is good healthcare easily accessible? You'd be surprised. There are many places in this country where it's very hard to get decent health care and you have to, to travel a significant distance. Mm-hmm. We're, we're spoiled in the New York, New Jersey area that our health care is so excellent in such a short distance. Mm. Um, but I, I assure you that's not the case in many places. So the hip so bone there, is connected to the, to the ear bone. Right, and the ear bone is connected to the elbow bone because it's all interconnected. Is that when you think about crime rate, we're talking about like why is there so much crime? Because they're 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 saving too. It's just they're using a different five twenty nine and four one k plan. Their their retirement plan is through crime. So as they're not able to save, then you'll have more crime, uh, more action. Uh, you know, the doctors will have, you know, we sh- talked about demand supply. So if you are living in a home that costs you 30000 uh property taxes, then um, then you're only, the 60000 gets reduced to 30000 on living. Now, now, but let's keep it at sixty and not uh, focus on that and ask, does that include the golf member, the golf club membership? Um, of course, it right, includes right. everything. Yeah, right, right. It, you know, there are some things that that when if you just lived off of sixty thousand, but wasn't allowed to go to many of the places that are nice things, now suddenly um, those niceties, uh, without those niceties, sometimes life becomes ca- kind of difficult to to go through. Some niceties. So, so I want to know w- what perks can I have on? Does it include like uh, a cruise every year? You know. Well, I this this is this is very dependent on uh, the rest of your lifestyle. So, you know, people people can go on a cruise every year if they figure out how to make that work. Mm-hmm. Um, cruises are not necessarily that expensive, especially if you do things like take a uh, you know a cheap interior cabin. Um, interestingly, I, I've read about people who basically give up their home and retire on a cruise ship. Mm-hmm. In other words. You can just cruise 365 days out of the year, 
Um, by the way, this would not be a lifestyle I would choose. But uh, but people do that, and they don't don't have to pay for their home. Uh, they're just paying for the cruise. They get all their meals provided. Um, I, I guess some of these cruise ships have doctors on board. So uh, I don't know. It's it's uh, may not be the worst the worst thing in the world. Right. So it, it might be better than the senior home treatment. Right. So so um, and, right. And nursing home. So so then does the sixty thousand a year cover? Um, some, I, I mean, I've, I've visited various different types of senior nursing home situations, and I see that there are differences in qualities. For example, um, some provide you more than the same meal every day. Like you have options, A, B menus to choose from. And I asked, can I, I like I, my first name is Gordon, so, so I want to know, can I go from, can you give me a nursing home or a senior home that has options of A through G. I, I'm not very greedy. You know, A, B, C, D, E is five. Uh, e, F, G. So I just ask for, you know, like seven days of the week, seven choices. Seven choices to choose from on every every meal. Breakfast, I have seven options. You know, lunch, I have seven options. And don't wake me up at five in the morning to exercise. I want to get up like I normally get up. How do I do that? Um, on the sixty thousand um, uh, dollar budget plan, right? It, it, or is it a budget plan? That, or is it not in the budget plan? Those are uh, things are in my mind. That's, Dr. Chu, that's probably not in the budget plan. Not in the budget plan. F- not seven in the options. Plan. Seven. You, you know what? Like when you go to a restaurant, we have to go out to eat sometime. You know, it's like you know the seven options. Um, it, could you imagine us going to a place and it only has like seven options? It doesn't feel very good. You know. You say, like, that's your menu, that's it, right? Um, but there are. But could you imagine going to a place where there's only two options, you know, David? Well, interestingly enough, I, I went on a uh, trip to Japan uh, about a month ago, uh-huh. and we ate in this great restaurant, and they only had one thing on the menu. That was mm. it. Take it or leave it. And how many times were you at that restaurant every day? Well, just once. Right. But if <laughs> Once you're over in a, the entire right? trip. So, of course, you wouldn't want to do that every day. So yeah, that uh, uh, we in looking at data sets, it actually your options affects your longevity and your happiness, and your happiness affects how long you're going to be living healthily. Because if you're not happy after sixty five, you actually get sick more often. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so you know there are, there are all sorts of things that go you know that go into it. You need to be stimulated. Yes. Um, mentally, physically, in order to live a long life. Sexually. And yes, possibly. Um, you 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 need to really uh, be um, living a full life in order to live a long life. Do you know why I added sexually? I'm sorry. Did you know why I added sexually? No, why did you add sexually? Because in one of the data sets I was looking at and talking with people who work there um, is that um, if you go to a, some types of nursing homes where there are men and women, say you're, you're, you're a woman or you're a man, doesn't matter, um, depending on who, who the other, um, we can call them classmates, we can call them inmates, we could call them um, n- neighbors, you could get um, sexually... Um, um, uh, I don't want to call it assaulted, but it's kind of like that. At night, someone, you know, there's a disease apparently as you get older and you don't even know about it and you end up jumping into someone's bed and you, you do, you know, you do your thing and, and then you can't even complain about it. I said, really, this is happening? And so it can happen in these environments. Um, and and yeah. so the price of protection, right, to make sure that, right. you know, in the final 30 years, it could be 30 years, 65 plus 30, right? It could, could be plus 20 years. It, it's it, The problem is if it happens in the last year, all right, I'm going anyway. But what if it happens in your first year? At 66, you're inside of a of a home and this happens to you. You still have to work off the next 19 years of that, that trauma. Most of the time, those sorts of things are happening in uh, memory care facilities mm. or places with patients with dementia. Yes. So, um, although I, you know, I don't know. And, of course, um, there are all kinds of care facilities at all kinds of levels. Mm. So, to be honest, I'm going to say that what you really want as you age is you want to be able to, um, what's called, age in place. 
you want to be in your own home, you want to be able to age in your own home, and you really want to get the care you need in your own home so you don't have to go to a facility. Now, sometimes you have no choice. You have to go to a facility. Uh, dementia is often a reason for that. Uh, it could be that you need more medical care than you could possibly get at home. But um, I'll tell you, my parents aged in their home until their 90s. Um, I have a client right now who's in her 90s. She actually broke her hip. Um, she was, you know, uh, went to the hospital. They put hardware in. She um, went to rehab. She did quite well, and now she's gone home again. Mm. So that's what you want. You want to stay in your home, if, if at all possible. That does require money because maybe you're going to need care. You need somebody to come in and help you. You, you want to be able to pay for that. Mm. That is excellent. That, that, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, sarcopenia is another research grant I landed, um, which is uh, basically the muscles uh, wasting um, and then leading to uh, falls. People falling is because the muscle you thought was there that could balance you going up the stairs is not functioning the same way. Uh, it is somewhat dehydrated, somewhat uh, smaller, uh, and so sarcopenia, in, uh, and you don't have to actually look um, uh, like you have muscle wasting. You could actually look like you, you're obese. There's a, something called uh, obesity with sarcopenia, and then that could also be something that affects people. Um, and so as you get older, um, the, the age that this stuff sets in, it's happening younger and younger now. Um, but 40s, 50s, this stuff could start setting in. Mm, Triggered yeah. by dieting, too. So when you go through the dieting exercise, because everyone wants to look a certain way, and uh, when you think about uh, muscle defects happening as you get older, well, dieting when you're in your, your teen years, whether or not that affects things, dieting when you're later, um, that could sometimes trigger the muscle and then, and then also the, um, the wrong types of exercises. So, so, you know, if you run into those problems, and this show is about the, uh, this interview is about the uh, retirement plans, is what amount of retirement, uh, you know, that allows you to age in place? Um, you gave a number of a million, but um, what, is, what is another, give me another number um, that gives me the power windows, the... Um, the uh, you know the, the 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 lights on the side of the car like what give me another number. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, you know it, it runs it runs the gamut. So I'm going to say a comfortable, reasonable retirement. I use the word reasonable uh -huh. starts at a million. Um, I would say that you know two and a half to three million dollars at age 65, you're going to have a pretty good retirement. You can okay. do what you want. You can do all these things. Um, without being wealthy, in other words, without right, without right. Uh, um, uh, what I you know without excess spending. Um, if you really want to uh, spend significantly in retirement and uh, you know be be luxurious, now you're talking five million or ten million at, at age sixty five. So, hmm. um, but you know many people. When they, when they retire right away, they're often spending for things like travel. They're spending a lot immediately, and then their spending actually goes down as they get older because they're not physically able to do as much, so um, they're really spending less. You know, what was one time um, I had a, um, someone doing some uh, work for me, and um, it was uh, construction work. And they, they sold their, their bill of goods saying that um, they, treat, they treat my project like they would treat their own home. And that sounds just so, so good, right? And I said, yeah, that's, that sounds great, until I experienced that. And then, um, and then I said, you know, this piece of wood looks like it's rotted. It has mold on it. And I said, can you throw that out? Because I, I, that's how I would treat it. And the, and, and the individual said to me, what? Are you crazy? So, so you see, that's what I mean is that I said, I thought you're going to treat it like my own home. No, like his own home. He would never throw something like that out. 
And so I realized that you need to don't just you know, look at the surface. You got to get inside the details of what it is. Where it, does the standard lie? Two and a half, three million. You know, David explained that it's actually not um, not the Bentley. It's not the Birkin bag. Uh, the, you know, the 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 two two and a half to three million retirement number is. Um, is uh, is is not wealthy. It's just you know uh, 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 somewhat nice. I think the million number um, that now now, I'm, now that I relatively look at it, it might be somewhat dangerous, <laughs> you know, and danger you and to have less than that a hundred thousand. That is um, that's still better than zero, uh, but it is a problem, right? Would you say it's still better than zero? That's why yeah. you know. Um, when, when you look at uh, mm. there's there's other statistics out there, and I mm. don't know what they are offhand. Maybe you do, uh, Dr. Chu. But uh, how many seniors are just living from Social Security income? I think it's like 25 percent or somewhere around there. Mm. So they have no other savings. The only income that they get is from Social Security. Mm. Mm. So, um, you know, we do have a... Uh, a real crisis in this country where um, there are many seniors who who did not save enough, were unable to save enough. I mean, you know, I'm not necessarily going to blame them. And they don't have a lot of income. Exactly. So unable to save enough. I mean, if this was a social show, right, then it would be perhaps you, they didn't make enough. Um, and why didn't they make enough? Because the type of job they chose or maybe they didn't have a choice doesn't pay enough. So it all comes back to, okay, then, then if, if the majority of people are not saving enough, then does that affect the ecosystem of what we're all retiring based on? Because, because uh, for example, home insurance uh, is, not, is, is not part of this show, but it's a good data set to look at. Is if you live in a place with wildfires um, constantly recurring, you may have experience that um, such as California, and now 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 New Jersey also sees that. But um, you may not have your insurer continue to insure your million dollar home. They might say we're not we're pulling out, and you say, oh well, I don't need them. But actually, if they pull out, it may affect the value of your home. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Um, it absolutely will. Um, and you know, you you ra you raise an interesting point. People pay up, so people who have mortgages, the bank that give, gives you your mortgage requires you to have home insurance. Yes. Why? Because the bank wants to protect their investment in their home. Your, your bank is actually <laughs> a, right. a co-owner of your home. Mm, yes. Um, so, so the bank wants to. Yeah. The bank is not requiring you to have homeowners insurance anymore. And there are some people who misguidedly drop their homeowner's insurance. Then they get flooded out, or um, that's, that's the most common in New Jersey, unfortunately, mm. or their home burns because of wildfire or because of just a fire in the home. And suddenly they've lost this large amount of, um, this, of net worth, this large asset. Mm. And, uh, you know, what do they do? They may look to the government for help or to uh, to go fund me um, instead of, you know, they should have just paid for their homeowner's insurance. Hmm. So um, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a problem. M many people only think about today and they don't think about tomorrow. They don't think about their risks. They don't think about their long-term plan, and um, no matter how much money you make, you can afford to put a couple of dollars away for your retirement. Now, maybe that's not a lot, but just a couple of dollars. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of um, opponents to this. Uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, if you wanted people to uh, consume more that year, buy more uh, unnecessary things or stuff like that, then you may want to s tell them, oh, yeah, spend it all. 
spend every dollar, do, you know, for example, uh, uh, it, it, one of the places people enjoy going to would be the casinos, right? You know, if you have any excess, go gamble it. You might be able to uh, double your money, come back, you know, and then that, and plus it's entertainment. So you spend it on those little pleasures and other things and find out, you really find out who's paying for the lights, right? And, uh, and, the, and the glamour. Then you si- suddenly see that, um, that, um, that, that if you don't plan ahead, um, that, that, that actually the burden uh, rises to even those who have planned ahead. It's all, we're all in this ecosystem together, so it's a, it's a balance right. of the ratio. Um, and, um, yeah, and, and I'm glad you, you highlighted today what exact, always ask, what does $60,000 a year really buy you? Um, and then look at what it buys, and does it, does it really, is that what you want? Because because that's what you're going to have. Now, Now the other thing is, um, why do most people after 65 um, have to rely on their retirement uh, savings? Why can't they, um, um, why can't they have um, income streams from, um, from other sources that, that match that, their existing income? Dr. Chu, that's, that's an interesting point. Um, and I, I guess, I'm not sure if you asked the question this way, but this is the way I'm going to answer it. Mm. Um, we are living longer. Mm-hmm. Um, although there are many um, health challenges that people um, have when they get older, mm-hmm. there is no reason why people can't work longer. Um, also, the demographics in this country, the demographics in the world, is really skewing older. Mm -hmm. And um, that would also mean that people should be able to work a bit longer. So 65 is um, not magic anymore. Um, When when that retirement age was set, you know, 30 years ago, um, people were expected to live maybe five or 10 more years. Now they're living 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Um, There is no reason why people can't work longer um, if they're healthy enough to do so. Now, maybe they're not going to work in their primary career. Maybe their primary career was not uh, something that's conducive to working longer. Mm. But uh, that doesn't mean that you can't get a job doing something else and supplement your income, supplement your retirement, yes. make that retirement last longer. So, uh, And many people, uh, I have many clients who are doing this. Um, I don't necessarily have to do it myself. But I'm going to do it because uh, I want to stay vital. I'm doing what I enjoy, mm-hmm. and I don't see why I need to retire at age 65. Uh, I have a grandfather who was a surgeon, and he practiced medicine until he was um, actually about 96, performed his last operation when he was 94. Mm. So um, my dad worked uh, into his 90s. Um, Again, not primary career, but a secondary career. And uh, I I think that's great. Yeah, exactly. So you can either choose carefully of before you jump into a career is does my career allow me to work longer or that will they kick me out? Right. Or um, or, uh, you know, while you're thinking about that, have you selected the right career um, for longevity? Right. If, if you don't, if you didn't select a right career for longevity, then perhaps that 529 plan we started with, maybe you switch it to your own thing, uh, your name uh, after your children. You go get another degree, um, and then you um, you 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 work out. I mean, 30 years is nothing to sneeze at, uh, to uh, uh, to 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 have to now endure. And with so many parts breaking, you may want to choose things that are that are conducive for that body type. You know, you're not going to be, um, you know, uh, doing, delivering things or using a lot of physical labor, but you, you, the brain still works and working the brain actually is very useful as a, um, as a, as a preventative for Alzheimer's. That's so. absolutely true. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, this was great. So. Thank you. Thank you for the show today. Uh, the, the interview, I hope this helps people out there. Um, and, um, and if it, uh, if it helps you, you know, pl- pass this uh, message along. This is the goal of, uh, getting people to understand. I, what I didn't cover today 
and another different time we'll we'll do this is accelerants in the um, so say you were you were late but you you have a have an opportunity you're seeing your kid um, uh, do better or you are seeing something learn something about this but you're 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 now 50 years old you 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 hear this uh, interview with David and I and uh, and then accelerants accelerant vehicles uh, for retirement. Uh, they, they exist. Um, some vehicles could pack more in there and others are less. We didn't go and differ differentiate. Otherwise, we'd talk for hours, but a different time. I'm going to talk with you about um, uh, accelerated um, ways to, uh, to pack more in. Absolutely, uh, Dr. Chu. And, you know, um, we talked about these tax-advantaged um, retirement plans. Yes. You know, a retirement Money for retirement can be in anything, uh, including a savings account. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be in a tax advantage account. Maybe you don't have one available to you. You've already maxed one out. Just, you know, save anywhere. Yes, including like we didn't touch health savings accounts that you could also st uh, stuff things like that in there. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's like all kinds of things under the Christmas tree. You could You could stuff... All various levels, um, and uh, and this is really good. Uh, let me end this here. I'm going to end the call, but don't hang up so that um, I close the call out from this point. All right? Okay. Okay.